Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Serial Trash Talking. As always, we're your hosts, DA and Rob, and tonight we've got a jam-packed episode. We're talking about the wonderful Lucky Charms Frosted Flakes, and we're going to be reviewing Super Bowl 55. So Rob, I know you're you're eager to get into these bad boys. Um, how are you feeling about it? Thanks, DA. It's great to be back. I'm absolutely fizzing about trying this, this cereal. I know it's one of your top five cereals out there, and you've made me wait a whole week for this to get back into it. So here we go. But before we, start, we, before we open up the packet, I want us to go through our five criteria that's just popped up right now. And our five criteria that Cereal Trash Talking lives by is the smell test, the dry test, flavor integration, structural integrity, and moorishness. So without further ado, let's crack into the box. Let's go. Oh, man. <laughs> Marshmallow is good, eh? Mm. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try. Oh, smell this! Marshmallows are delicious in this, dear. Great little color configuration here. Mm. Are, you, are you on a diet or something? <laughs> it's just a good size bowl, mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, DA, what can you tell me about the cereal? Lucky Chance Frosted Flakes came out in 2018 uh, as a new version or a mashup of the Frosted, Frosted Flakes and what everyone loves about the OG uh, Lucky Charms, the tiny marshmallows. So the original Lucky Charms actually debuted back in 1964. Uh, and it was basically just an oat-based cereal with uh, tiny little marshmallows. Now, the marshmallows have gone uh, through some changes over the years, um, but now we've got things, I'm not sure if you can see, like there's like little um, rainbows and unicorns, and um, it, it's just a delight to eat, and you can actually just buy the, um, it is possible in the US to actually just buy bags of the marshmallows. Yeah, it's very artistic. I know it's going to appeal to mm. a few people. Okay. So, so Rob, before we, we crack into the sports topics of the day, what are your initial thoughts on this era before we get into a bit more of a review later in the episode? Man, DA, it started off pretty well. Uh, initial thoughts are good. A uh, good crunch in the flakes, a uh, good smell coming out of the box, a uh, good dry mm -hmm. test in the individual portion. Now the milk's integrated uh, quite well and uh, enjoyed mm -hmm. a few uh, spoonfuls. So really enjoying it right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, it's a brilliant cereal. Um, but as, as we said, we'll, uh, we'll crack into it later in the episode. All right, DA, now I'm enjoying this bowl. What were your initial thoughts on the Super Bowl? Uh, was it everything that you had hoped for? Uh, Rob, to be honest, it was everything and more. It was an absolutely outstanding game. And, um, you know, it, it makes it all the sweeter when you predict a result and you get it right. Um, <laughs> something I know that you obviously got completely wrong. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to reveal to you my highlights of the, what I, what I thought were the standout points. I mean, Tom Brady, what an absolute legend, uh, 21 of 29 passing 201 yards and three touchdowns. And I mean, that connection he had with Gronk was just absolutely sensational. Um, he, <laughs> I mean, you, you, you had the disrespect of, of calling the homes the, baby goat earlier in the um earlier in the piece um man if anything he looked like bambi not a baby goat um brady has more super bowls alone than any franchise now that just just take that and he's got more than any franchise that's the steelers that's the pats um the the lane cowboys um you know it, it's incredible but what, what stands out to me most about this playoff run in particular, about Brady, who did he have to beat? He had to beat Drew Brees. He had to beat Aaron Rodgers. And he had to beat Patrick Mahomes. Probably the three best QBs in the league. Um, you couldn't make a harder beat, run in that, eh? You couldn't make exactly. a harder run. Exactly. Um, so to me, I mean, he, he, he was deserved MVP um, from an offensive point of view. 
we'll crack into the defense a little later, but I mean, he was outstanding. What, what did you think of the game? Oh, DA, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm shocked, disbelieved, uh, but in awe. I'm just in awe of the performance. Uh, now you want to say you get into the defense a bit later, but of everyone who just came together. And if you want to look at a team that peaked at the right time, you know, this team's going to be in the dictionary for peaking at the right time. Because mm-hmm. right? you can't get any better. And it's just week on week progression. You said it already. Breeze, Rogers, Mahomes. And that defense was ravenous. Mm-hmm. When you talk about Brady, 21 of 29, he's in cruise control. Absolute cruise control. Yeah. But then and saying he, that being he never looked he never looked like he was under pressure last night, did he? Not for a second. What one sec? I might have seen one sec. One sec I remember. Yeah, I think I think that, that sounds about right. One sec. And I mean what I what happened to this uh um spag bowl? I mean this uh, <laughs> this Brady whisperer. I mean I mean Oh man <laughs> Spagnol, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad the season's done, so my predictions can be put to bed. But mark my words, I will be back. I will be. Back. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have no idea, mate. I have no idea. He's in cruise control. Gronkowski came out of the woodwork. You know, he's used sporadically. Now he's back in. Da, easy as this. Chiefs defense didn't fire a shot. No one across the board. You know, besides. Besides the very first drive, uh, when the Bucks went three and out, that's uh, all they wrote. You know, all, mm. That's all they wrote. All he wrote. All they wrote. Yeah. You know, the, before being, you know, Tyron Matthew, uh, what was it uh, Jones as well? You know, Jones. You know, we just gave him a new contract. Well, he just got a new contract, yeah. but it didn't turn up. Yeah. So, I, I and even I don't know who to pick out because who are you going to pick out? Everyone didn't make a play. Couldn't make a play. Yeah. And that offensive yeah. line was, we should have been talking about that Bucks offensive line more often because they were beautiful. An they absolute were symphony. They, I mean, cruising, yeah. just cruising. Todd Bowles and, deserves the game ball, doesn't he? Oh, I mean, so it's not even a competition. That was no. ridiculous. It was ridiculous. That's what, but that's uh, what won them the game. A, a strong defense and a, a good running game. That's what won them the game. That's what set yeah. them up. And, and the way, I, I yeah, the way it started, you... eh? exhausting, exhausting yeah. the Bucks, uh, exhausting the Chiefs defense. You know, if you can't make plays when you're fresh, you know, it's going to be a lot harder when you're when you're exhausted yeah. and you're down and you're struggling. You know, Agreed. you really want to make a play. So I mean, yeah, I think 100 percent correct. And I mean, you're right. No one, no one in the Chiefs um, turned up defensively. Um, like I mean, I think you need to go and you need to look at the Honey Badger, for instance, Tyron Matthew. I mean. He was ill-disciplined. It wasn't just him, but it was the rest of the team. Um, I think Jones was was particularly bad in that first uh, first quarter. Um, and I mean, they just gave away needless penalties. Eleven penalties for 120 yards. I think I saw the stat that I, I think that the, the, the Chiefs were averaging 105 yards. I mean, 105 yards per game in penalties. And I mean, that's just you can't win games like that. Um, so it's not I mean, it's like, pretty, it's like yeah, like you said as well. It's not just the amount of yards of those penalties, but it's when those penalties were committed. Yeah, uh, that was down it's unfor- unforgivable, unforgivable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, on, it was on, it was on, it was on a, it was on, it was on a punt. It was on a field goal opportunity. They gave away an offside penalty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's right. No, and I that, set, no up, words, that so. set up the. They they had Gronk's second TD was straight after that, one play one play later, mate. So, no, I don't I know. So, it's, you know, I'm lost for words on it. So talk to me about Bambi. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm not I'm loving to get on board with Bambi, and I'm not going to say it again. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know Patrick, uh, he's lucky to get out. Of, he's lucky to get out of Tampa with his life. So. <laughs> That, that hit that Indomitian Sue put on. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I, I was so surprised that he managed to just get up, shake that off. Good lad, eh? Hey, good lad. Uh, yeah, mate, good lad. Uh, the whole night, the whole night, he was running for his life. 
I know I've heard the stats a, a few times on how much he was actually pressured. What is he pressured? Mm. About 48, 48% of um, the defensive snaps that he had to face. Him, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's an absolute record, mate, because we put that in comparison. Well, they get 9% yeah. uh, pressure on Brady. And yeah. you just imagine how, <laughs> how far away that is. Yeah. How, that's just worlds yeah, exactly. apart. And how are you supposed to make things happen? How are you mm. supposed to make things happen when you're under pressure 50% of the snaps? Yeah, you just can't, so, can you? One thing that I'll give to him, though, as I always felt or always believed that if you had somebody on the other side who was going to come back from a little bit of adversity, you know, keep the game interesting. Because we, we oh, you know, yeah. at the end of the day with sports, say we want a contest, so we want it to be entertaining, we want it to be close. And at least he could provide that. Whether it, Clearly it didn't happen, but at least there was that chance or that sniff that if something went That's right, right yeah. or a pass was caught or when he's getting... You know, he's getting flung to the ground. He's horizontal, releases yeah, it into the back corner. And if that came off, then who do, who knows what may have yeah. happened. But at the least Bucks, the Bucks were with in, that um, instinct. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're right. I mean, the Bucks were in um, Atlanta Falcons territory for a little bit there in the third quarter, weren't they? Where you, it's it teetering. Hey, it's been teetering. Yeah. Um, so, no, I'm, I, I think without a doubt, the better team won last night. I think the Bucks yeah. came to play. Uh, and I don't really think they look like losing. And I mean, what can I say? I picked them earlier in the week and um, they didn't disappoint. It's probably the only pick I got right this year. So Rob, really quick take. Um, I just want a quick answer for this. Do you think that we will see both of these teams in the Super Bowl next year? No. No, I can't, I can't see it the end. Besides the percentage okay. has been extremely low to get both teams back. You know, it's, it's hard to see the, you know, the Chiefs bounce back, whatever form they're in. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we'll dive more into that in our next episode where we do a full season review of the 2021 season. Um, so, Process Flakes, Lucky Charms, the great people at General Mills. What did you think of it, Rob? What are, what are your thoughts? And then give me a score out of 10. Uh, DA overall, uh, smell was good. Smell out of the pack was good. I know marshmallows come through strong. Uh, dry tests were strong. I think... Uh, the corn, the cornflakes, like the almost like a, the honey cornflake, is fantastic to eat. But as a dry test, but the marshmallows let me down uh, with a sort of uh, frosted marshmallow. I wasn't a huge fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, hung together well with the uh, milk saturation uh, integrity. By the end of it, you know the crunch was still there for the cornflakes, and I wasn't overly Moorish from um, my particular favorite. So overall, I give it a seven. Da. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, Rob, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually, I really like um, cornflakes when they be soaked in milk and so that they go a little bit soggy. I, I actually quite enjoy that. Um, and, you know, the, this, I, I've told you before, this is in my top five, but I actually, I come away from this bowl being a little bit disappointed. Um, so I'm actually going to go a seven five. I still think it's slightly superior to the OG uh, Lucky Charms. Um, but I just think there wasn't enough going on that differentiated it from a bowl of either frosted flakes or regular cornflakes with sugar. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, guys, for joining us on episode four tonight. And I hope you enjoyed the Lucky Charms review and the Super Bowl review. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Hit, turn on your notifications because next week we are going to be... Oh, <laughs> we're going to be getting into Cinnamon Toast Review and we're going to talk about a, a full-on season review and what we want to look forward to in the future next season. Now, to take you out, here's a couple of the OGs themselves or the goats in their spot. Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, you and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have just won the Super Bowl. What are you going to do next? We're going to Disney World!